Living in the present moment is not living in the past. Do not let your minds go back into the swamp of memories and bad feelings that happened years ago. And don't, by the same token, be afraid of the future. You've come to the point of believing. You really should understand that you'll only have half a loaf in life if you do not not only believe, but trust. When Jesus says, be not afraid, fear is useless. Trust is the answer. You've got to find a way to make that happen. I don't feel God, I don't see him, I don't have the emotion of him being present, I don't feel his love. Other people do, I don't have that gift. It's bullshit. That is negative self-talk that can only bring you down. So I'll sum up. I know you're getting restless and I don't blame you. Um, the theology of the church is clear. You have a vocation to be joyful. You have to talk yourself into becoming a joyful person because you may not be there yet. And in the AA, they have an expression, fake it until you make it. And it's like saying, I am clean. I am clean and sober. Long before you are really clean and sober. You believe that you're clean and sober and you work to display the confidence you have. By the grace of God, I'm clean and sober. You make choices in life to determine what your path will be. The will controls the thoughts. The thoughts control the feelings. The feelings control the actions. The will, the intellect, the emotions, and the actions. Road rage, rage is something that we see demonstrated occasionally. And it could be justified. It happens to me if somebody cuts me off. I wouldn't want to tell you my exact reaction. But road rage can also be the outlet for somebody who's interiorly angry all the time over things that happened a long time ago. You can be angry over things that happened to you when you were a kid. And it's not as though you can turn it off like a switch. It doesn't go away. But you can begin to find a way to deal with it. It's not what happens to you in life. It's how you deal with it. Uh, I'll sum up with a book I just read. Christopher sent me a copy. Would you read this and give us a critique? Do you think it's worthy of a Christopher Award? That's why I'm reading this book. It's called I Shall Not Hate. It's written by a Muslim who was born and raised in the Gaza Strip in terrible poverty. Because he was exceptional as a student, he, he was famous along the way and was able to get a scholarship. He wanted to be a doctor. And he got a scholarship out of the poverty of the world he was living in. He got a doctor's degree from the University of Cairo. And then he excelled in some way. He was in OBGYN. And he got a further scholarship for specializing in fertility at Harvard University. So here is this poor little Muslim kid who didn't have a chance. He got to be a doctor. He went back to Israel and got a job in the Israeli hospital where Muslims and Jews do work together in harmony. And they help the patients. They have a superior calling, I mean healing unites them, and they don't live in the gutter of vengeance, fear, and hatred. Anyway, he's performing well, everybody likes him. Suddenly, there's a battle breaks out. The, the Muslims, radical Muslims, blew up a place, and Israel re, replied by sending rockets or bombs into the Gaza Strip, and this doctor's house was hit. And three young girls, his daughters, and one niece 
were killed by collateral damage. And it resurrected all the hatred of the violence and the ongoing brutality of the conflict between Israel and the Palestine. And he spent a week, you know, enraged and in anger. But he made up his mind, his will, decided that he would not hate and he would not perpetuate it. He, he, he decided he would com commit himself not to hate and then to do what he could to improve relations. And so the book is about it. Now he's recognized uh, you know, nationally as a pretty superior person. But what comforted me in it, he got his inspiration from the Quran. He doesn't, he doesn't believe the things we do, but the Quran is full of peace, except for these small sections which have to do with vengeance uh, and jihad. That's a big problem. I, I think the, the work needs to be done in, in is, Islam is tremendous. But that this man could come out of it by saying, I will not hate spoke volumes, you know, it's an incredible book and an incredible theme. And it is possible, if the world is ever to have peace, it is possible to get more people to try to commit themselves to this kind of love. It's a high level of love. And so, my dear friends, I thank you for your patience. I've really enjoyed being here with you, I hope. I've elevated your optimism so that happiness is possible for you, that you have a greater degree of acceptance of the Lord's invitation to be happy, and that you don't put yourself down by negative thinking that only can lead you to self-hatred or self-discouragement. I want you to become your own best friend and to do everything you can to be on your side and pat yourself on the back. You've done a lot of good in your life. There's a lot more that you're going to do. Do not be afraid. The Lord loves you very much.